When did you first hear this song? Do you remember anything around that time? Oh, yeah, I remember discovering Jackson Brown like in the in the early 70s. And uh, a lot of it has to do with this trip to California. As my sister was into it first and we were playing. Uh, I remember we played late for this guy going across the, the Golden Gate Bridge. Nice. And I thought, wow, this guy is powerful. And then, you know, I'd always known Dr. My Eyes as a single right. and, and, and Rock Me on the Water and stuff. But, but then I just got deep, deep, deep into it. What a songwriter, right? <laughs> yeah. And he was Everything. young, man. That's the thing when you started writing I know, this stuff. He was young and beautiful too, right? Yeah, that didn't hurt. Mm, that didn't that hurt didn't at hurt. all. <laughs> right on, here we go. Okay. Here we go. Um, tell me about this, this particular record, the solo record, the new one. How, is it a moment in time or is it a collection of songs from elsewhere? No, it's definitely a moment in time. It's definitely a reflection on the past year. Yeah. And uh, there's a, there was a sort of a gathering principle in that there was a friend of mine who I lost to cancer last year. And uh, <clears throat> he was very instrumental in, in finding us this rural location that we have for our weekend place that was his area and he loved it up there and we went up in october with a couple of his friends and my friends and uh, we didn't realize it but it was going to be his last time up there but we it was a good time for him he was just still on the up upswing and and uh, he could eat and drink and he was a prodigious drinker like truly <laughs> yeah I, I nobody could keep up with him and we got so 
hammered that night. And we, we, you know, we were very honest about, you know, we were, we were going to lose him. So we, we said, we're going to go outside and we're going to name a star after you're up. And we said, we'll make it easy. So it's going to be the handle of the Big Dipper. And we'll always think about you. And we go outside and truly we are such idiots. We cannot find the Big Dipper. Well, we can't find it. And it's a clear sky, and we're going all the way around the house. <laughs> we're staggering. And we have these very funny pictures of us sort of laughing, crying. And, uh, and that was a bit of the, that, that crystallized what the record should be about for me. You know, I think as I wrote songs, I just wrote them about the true things in my life, you know. And is, is that always, it's always been the case for you. You write about truth, but sometimes songwriters can write metaphorically. Well, I think so, but I think also I, I think that there's a, been a lot of times when I've written and drawn pearls from the past, and yeah. and you know if if uh, I just saw the Leonard Cohen exhibit, so he says you know songs are the ashes of of your life. It's, it's right. you pick up the ash, sort through the ashes, and and I've done a lot of that. And this this record was a little different, and it's that's a little bit more uh, contemporary things that are going on and 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 matter to me, and which was a part of the pride of the record. I mean, when I finished the record, I thought I got a lot of good stuff in there. And was it, were you unsure? I know you know you're, you're a good songwriter, but when you set out to do a project like this, do you know what you want out of it? No. No, I didn't. Uh, I didn't. I mean, I just started writing songs, and I think that's what, it, writing Constellations, which was the song about Rob, <clears throat> and having it, you know, having something not just serious, but also comedic to write about. Because yeah. I don't have just an entirely serious view of the world. Some of my views are judgmental, some are silly you know so i think that that one set a bit of a um a, a verbal tone that i could i knew that i could operate on both both sides want to play another one for us sure what's the next one so this is called while i was waiting for you <clears throat> and uh this is a song i i've written so many songs that have involved my wife and and then some that have not and she doesn't really like how she's depicted in songs because she feels she never gets the last word <laughs> And that's true. And, and so this one, she, she just, she just, you know, the songs I've written about her are not, they're not, uh, there's no funny side to it. It's just how we are. And she doesn't, she doesn't believe it's her. <laughs> well, that's, I think it, she better great. believe it's her. It's better than the option. It's well, better than her thinking it's someone else. She, doesn't, she, doesn't, she thinks it's, you know, she doesn't care. She's never, she never taken any of it too seriously. So therefore, you know, maybe I've cried wolf too many times. Do you think so, deep well, this down. This is about you. Do you think deep down she listens to the songs when you're not around and she takes great pride knowing it's about her? Yeah, I don't think that's true, George. No, I don't. <clears throat> that sounds nice and I wish that were true, but I don't think that's true. <laughs> Someone you should see I say why you do this to me I'm happy on the shelf There's nothing left to rattle my head I walked into the room And I just knew right away Small talk time As the hours ticked away So many nights so blue
of a slamming door Who knows about the road that lies ahead Could be good or we could both be dead A little life's lesson you don't go messing around with me Is it in the band, in Blue Rodeo, do you have to get buy-in from the band when you're writing a song? No, of course not. No, no. Blue Rodeo is great about that. I'm mean, accepting what everybody writes. But I think that still you are writing for a committee. You're writing to involve all the voices of Blue Rodeo. Right, so when you do and this. And I think when I'm, sitting with, when I'm sitting here, I mean, obviously I consider what my band can do, what this band can do, yeah. but I just am concentrating on my little old self so i think it makes a difference ultimately um and how the songs end up inside your brain are you are you do you have the two voices that's not right that's right no not at all i mean i don't ever write i don't ever ever overlap so i don't ever have that problem it's just that i think i have a little easier time admitting a subject and allowing it in than i and this is only in retrospect. I don't yeah. do this consciously. I try to be as open and honest as I can in, in Blue Rodeo too. But but I just don't. I guess I censor myself at some some subconscious level. Right. And so when you were putting these songs together, bit by bit, what did you learn about yourself? <laughs> well, you know, I, I it's different being my age. I, I, I'm not in a quandary about who I am. I'm not writing with question marks. I, I am. A little judgmental. I do see things with a certain amount of humor. I am sentimental and easily wounded. So all those things go into songs. I sort of unapologetically. I'm not questioning. I'm not looking for answers. I'm actually just writing. You know, this is the biography. You know who you are. Yeah, for better, for worse, for sure. But you may not be looking for questions, but people are always on some version of it. Many people are on a quest. Artists are. Mm -hmm. what, do, you, do you have any of that? Well, I, but again, I don't, you know, it's not, I don't think that I have, I've attached myself to any different part of myself to write songs than when I was 12. I think that it was always an extremely relaxing and focusing solitary experience writing songs. And obviously the landscape has changed and the things that I draw on to write about. And, and also the stakes have changed. I don't, I don't leave anything in a song that I don't understand anymore. I try to figure it out. If it, if it is a meaningful misunderstanding, I'm okay with that. But if I don't understand it, I don't just put it into rhyme or to formality. I try to write things that I think make sense to me. Where is your head at now just as a human being? Like, not about you. Just when you're looking at the world and, and, and watching what's going by. It's a big one, right? That's like perhaps the biggest question you could possibly ask, yeah. ask somebody. Uh, That's what you come here for. Well, <laughs> I mean, I think that, you know, I... Okay. The, the world is in a funny position right now. And, and I'm glad that I'm an artist so that I can walk back and forth across the line of caring and not caring. I can walk in, you know, I can wake up in the morning, I can read all the news and I can say, what are we thinking? What are we doing? Um, okay, and then, and then I can go back to being an artist. So here's a good example. So I just saw the Leonard Cohen exhibit in Montreal. And if you walk into the exhibit, it's just quite elaborate, uh, a whole floor, and there's a lot of reverential stuff. There's a lot of people taking Leonard extremely seriously. And then you see him interviewed, and he's funny about everything. Yeah. About everything. Every question. He's, he's serious. He's answering the question. But he's, he has a, gives you permission to laugh at your own seriousness. 
And, uh, and that's always a position I've identified with. I thought, I'm glad I'm a musician and artist because I have the ability, I have the permission to step back and say, you people are screwed, <laughs> but I can write a song about it. And uh, so I guess that's where my head's at now. The comfort good. with my position. That's a good place. What are you going to play next? Well, I think we should do the, let's do the Blue Rodeo song yeah. then. Okay? So we'll do a... Oh, yeah. 
That was amazing. Jim, tell us who's here with you today, please. Yes. Yeah. So on my left is Colin Cripps. On my right is Ann Lindsay. On the keyboards is Steve O'Connor. Mm -hmm. And Basil Donovan on the bass. Uh, and your, your history with Jim goes back a minute, doesn't it? It does. We went to school together in grade seven and eight. He was there for a big moment in your life, wasn't he? Yes. In grade eight, I was awarded a violin by the Toronto District School Board. Uh, and they gave it to me because I was sort of the, the primo violinista. I was the concert mistress. And so when I was given this violin, um, I walked up and I was crying my eyes out. Of course, he remembers that and gives me flack about it. You were and, there in um, the assembly. And then a few years later, when I decided to join a rock and roll band, I drilled a hole in the violin and <laughs> put a pickup in it. And that was the violin I played when I first played in the Jim Cuddy band. Could you have imagined, Jim, that that girl that was crying going up on stage to get that violin? would be with you in your band? No, I mean, I couldn't imagine I'd be in a band then, but, <laughs> but uh, no, we were, by that point, we were in very different worlds because I'd actually been put out of the All-City Orchestra for my, for inappropriate behavior. So, uh, so no, we were, we were on different paths. We were on different <laughs> paths, and yet, I straightened out and she went wild. So, <laughs> so that's what brought us together here. Nice. <laughs> what, do you, what do you want to play now? Uh, we're going to do a song called You Be the Lever. No matter what I 
beautiful song. What's that one? I mean, well, I know what it's about, but what's it about? <laughs> uh, it's about being sort of surprised that uh, I think as you get older, relationships end and you're surprised by that. Uh, sometimes you think that they are, they will last forever and circumstances change and they don't. And that's a, it's an incredibly sad thing and takes you by surprise. It's a beautiful solo record, man. Thank you very it's much. Beautiful, I appreciate man. that. Thank George. you so Thanks much. A lot. Appreciate it. Thank it's you. nice to be here. Always it's nice to be always here. Always nice to have you in the house. It just feels like it's warm. It's lovely. Can we just stay? Is it okay? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I've got it's a futon. For lunch. I've got a futon. <laughs> what are we having? <laughs>